This is Frank Knight with a summary of the news. Another earthquake hit the northeast coast of Japan yesterday. The quake, measuring 7.3 in the Richter scale, was the second in four days and led to widespread damage. 24 people were reported dead with scores of others said to be injured or missing. Fighting continues in Central America between guerrillas and government forces. And in the Middle East, terrorist gunmen attacked diplomats at three embassies. Two of the attacks were unsuccessful, but a third left four people wounded, one critically. The search continues today for a man who fled the First National Bank on foot Thursday after... In local news, a fire in a downtown apartment claimed the lives of seven people this morning. Fire Chief Thomas Bailey said the cause has not yet been determined, but added there are reasons to suspect arson. This is the third such fire in the last two months, and both local authorities and citizens groups have expressed their concern. In other news, a federal grand jury had indicted former County Commissioner Harold Epps on two charges of fraud. Epps continues to maintain his innocence and told... You know what we're talking about today? The book of Revelation still, preparing for the last days. The last days? Who has time to worry about that? I'll be happy if I can make it through my chemistry final Thursday. I know what you mean. I've got five finals this week I'm worried about. Alan will read from Revelation chapter 16. The rest of you can follow along in your scriptures. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. Sounds like the news on the radio. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Thank you, Alan. We have many images of the end of the world in our minds, don't we? And many questions about what the last days will really be like. For these, after all, are the days in which we're blessed to live. And sometimes they're good. My locker! I can't believe it. How awful. Who could have done it? Is anything missing? My purse. It was up here behind my math book. Do you think you'll ever get it back? I doubt it. All right. I'll read the sentences in English this time. You say I'm back in German. At that time, he called me by my first name. Da 
Hafmaz Nanta Ermik Bein Vornamen. Right. Try... It is your turn. Only four more days. I can't wait for school to be over. Yeah, me too. But after a couple weeks of vacation, I usually get bored and start missing everybody. It's your turn, remember? Sie sind... Sie sind... I can't do it, Janice. What's the matter, Sue? Come on, let's go outside and talk. When did your dad leave home? He moved out last week. Filed for divorce. I didn't mean... I just wasn't gonna tell anybody. Well, I'm glad you did. I don't see how you could handle it alone. Since he left, it seems Mom's always crying. When she isn't crying, she's yelling at one of us kids. It's all right, Janice. I'll live through it. It's just... It's just pretty hard right now. So many kids at school have parents getting divorces. It's scary. Can I borrow your dictionary? I need it for an English paper. I'll write your paper if you'll cut out these horrible articles for me. <laughs> what are you doing? Clipping headlines for my current events project. Look at them. Every one deals with murder, disaster, war, dishonest politics. I hate it. It makes me sick. Yeah, it's, it's not too good, I guess. Not too good? It's depressing. Isn't there anything good to report? Sure, but the good stuff's never as sensational as the bad. I don't know, Eric. Sometimes it scares me. It seems like the world's getting more horrible every day. I mean, how can we avoid having awful things happen to us? I don't know. I guess it is hard to know what's going to happen, but <laughs> you could go crazy worrying about it. Yeah. Uh, the dictionary's on my bookcase. Thanks. knows what's going to happen to us. This whole week's been rotten. Oh? Yeah. It just seems like all I hear is bad news. Mm, I'm afraid I've got some more bad news. What's that? The Schaefer's service station burned down last night. You're kidding! Was anyone hurt? No, it happened after they'd closed. Some kind of explosion or something. I can't believe everything they've had to go through these past few months. First Mike, and now this. It's not fair. Life just isn't fair. It just seems like the whole world has gone crazy. Wars, people getting killed, divorces, stealing. I guess I'm just scared. The future just seems to be one big mess. Oh, I remember feeling that same way, Janice. It got to a point where I couldn't even think about the future. It all seemed so impossible. When was that? Right after your father died. Oh. I have something that might help you. I'll see if I can find it for you after dinner.
Your journal? Yes. I think now might be a good time to have you read this part. Thanks, Mom. I can't sleep again tonight. I still can't believe that John was taken from us. How could God let it happen? Didn't he know how much I love John? Didn't he know how much I need him? How much we need him? And now what? What about Eric and Janice growing up in this mixed up world without a father? I'm so lonely. It was such a stupid accident. How could the Lord let it happen? <sighs> what will I do now with no job and two children to raise who don't understand why this had to happen any more than I do? I've tried to understand. I really have. Oh God, why couldn't you have done something? Now we're left alone in a crazy, senseless world and John not here to take care of us. How can that be right? There's so many decisions to be made. I can't even think about what's going to happen to us now. I won't think about it. How can I? This will be the first time since John died that I've written without gloom and accusation and self-pity. This evening, after I put the children to bed, I picked up the scriptures. I was reading in the 21st chapter of Revelation about the promise of the millennium that former things would pass away and there would be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain and I wondered, why couldn't I live then? John wouldn't have died and we would still be together. I began to feel sorry for myself again, and the old anger and despair started to return. Then I felt impressed to read the words of Jesus to his apostles at the Last Supper, the things he said just before his overwhelming sorrow and suffering in Gethsemane and on the cross. It was one simple sentence that made the difference, one powerful truth that satisfied the hunger and yearning I had to make sense of a world that seemed senseless. I know it was an answer to prayer. And as I read the last sentence in John, 16th chapter, 33rd verse, over and over, I was filled with a calm, peaceful assurance about the future. How strange and wonderful that it could happen so suddenly. But I know now more strongly than I have ever known that even if today we are threatened by the darkness and temptation and the uncertainty of the world, we can rise above the world and its difficulties and that tomorrow can be bright and glorious and good if we stay close to the Lord. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world.